Hey everybody, it's Ruby here. Um, I'm coming today with some dreams I've had I had this week that I want to share um, that the Lord I feel is telling me to share. Um, I'll start with the dream I had last night. Um, and it was pretty intense. It was a little confusing. Of course, I'm still seeking insight on it, but it's just these two dreams on top of each other felt very strong that I needed to share. So this first dream, it um started, I think I was in place of someone in this dream. And it started out as as um, a group of people, it was a small number of people working for the kingdom of darkness, for sure. And um, I was in place of one of them, and they were, like, gathered in a circle. And they all had, like, we all had this key or this, it didn't look like a key, but it was, it reminded me of a key. And we all were supposed to use this key to like open a portal or open and open something and allow fallen angels to come down so as everybody was taking their turn to open it I can't remember exactly this whole dream but this is just what I remember each person was opening it opening it and they're ready they're like okay let's go then it came my turn once I started realize what was happening of course my self came into the view and I was like what's going on here I'm not gonna open this like that I'm not a part of this group I'm not working for the kingdom of darkness why like what in the world like like that's I think that's when it hit me like oh shoot I'm part of this group like like obviously of course in real life I'm not but it was just like I was impersonating someone I don't know but when I said no I'm not going to open this I'm not going to be responsible I'm not going to be a part of this I remember God I, I know God I love God and God would be angry with me if I did this why would I do something like this <laughs> like it's, it, it was it was foolish and because I decided not to open it whoever was in charge I don't know if it was God I don't know I can't remember but they said I could give them the key and they'll find somebody else to do it so I was like okay do you and I walked away and I was minding my own business and as I like circled back and I like happened to just see them again waiting on a person to open it and I'm like as I was waking up I was thinking I wonder what this means does this mean that the evil people's plans the enemy they're they're close they're close to their plan they're close to opening and allowing fallen angels to come they're close to allowing chaos I don't really understand what it means but that's just what I got in my spirit is that these people are close the enemy is close to what he uh, is trying to do um, to cause chaos pretty much like they were just waiting on one person to do it and the person didn't even want to do it which I guess was me I don't know <laughs> but of course not in real life like I don't know what they're trying to do but it was just weird. It was a weird dream the Lord allowed me to be, to see. So I just wanted to share that one. If you guys have any insights on that, please let me know. And then uh, this one dream I had, it was on June 7th. And it was a very powerful, very, very powerful dream I had. And I'll just get into this one. So, it started out, it was a conference. It was like a, you know, like one of those Christian conferences you go to, to get deeper with God, and you meet up with a bunch of people you don't know. 
Well, it was like that. But instead of in a room where everybody's listening to one person, we were all walking. Like we were walking on the path, you know, like in how it talks in Matthew 7, verse 13, talks about the narrow path. Well, it seemed like we were walking on a path as we were at this conference. Like it was like spiritual version, I'm not sure. But um, as we were walking on this path, there were doors and pathways on the right, on the left, all around, like, as we were walking, it was just these doors, and these doors all looked the same, it was like the same entrance, and, um, they appeared peaceful, like, you'd want to go in, but at the end of the day, something inside of me was like, no, we shouldn't go in, and it reminded me of, as I woke up, it reminded me of, like, when you get off the path, because it seems like it's okay, and then, like, the devil gets you, like, you're trapped. Well, that's what it reminded me of. Like, I didn't, like, I knew in my spirit we should not go off this path. And there was a few Christians along the way that just happened to go in that door, go in this door, because they got caught up. They got enticed. They were like, I wonder what's in this door, you know? And I just knew we shouldn't go in that door. And so when when we were walking, I I I had a remembrance that the people who went in the door they um came out later on and they were like different. They weren't the same. And it reminded me of like how the mark of the beast will change you or something, you know, like they just were different. And um man, this dream was powerful. It was crazy. <sighs> but um as we were walking this path later on we were like getting closer to the end of the path. And, um, it's like towards the end, everyone forgot there was the doors. It, it was weird. It was like towards the end. <laughs> it, oh man, Lord, please help me explain this. Okay. Towards the end of the path, it's like the church merged with the evil door, like it's like the church merged and nobody even knew it, you know, like the church merged with, with the evil one, the evil people. And everybody was just happy and acting normal. Like there was no enemy anymore. There was no one, nothing to worry about. Just being comfortable living their lives at the end. We were at the end too, which is huge. And it reminded me of the New Age religion. How they're like merging with these false religions. And it's so dangerous. So, so dangerous what they're doing. They're merging with evil and calling it good and oh, that's just what the Lord revealed to me at the end of the path and everybody was acting so normal to the point where I felt myself feeling like okay you know I feel normal too but in the back of my mind I remembered those doors and I was like oh shoot you know what about those doors we gotta stay aware and I kept wanting to remember that I have I kept wanting to remember okay there's an enemy you know we can't just get caught up in our lives we gotta remember the enemy and everybody was just chilling the people came out of the doors and they were acting like they were normal when they they changed they like their whole beliefs changed they're like they, they, it's like they were the new age or something. Like, they just weren't the same. They weren't really on the path anymore. And it's like we all got sidetracked and 
were on a new path or something. It was weird. It was weird. And I think it was just a warning that God wanted me to give to stay on this narrow road, you know. It, and it, it was like a, a spiritual understanding to show me as you get to the end, it's gonna be it's gonna be like it's just it's just gonna be like you're gonna be blinded or something. That not God forbid us, of course, you know, but the people who are not focused on the enemy are for sure gonna be trapped. It it's it's crazy. It's it's really getting hard and we gotta just stick to the Stick to the word, you guys. Stick to God. Stick to Christ. Man, that that dream was crazy. It was crazy. It was like so many meanings I could get from it. But these are the main ones I got. And God is really saying something here. He's saying at the end of this path, as soon as you guys get close, don't don't lose it. Don't forget about the enemy. Don't act like, oh, you're safe. Because a lot of when you're running a race, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm almost there. I'm just going to slow down a little bit. You know, envision this. Envision this. You're running the race, right? Running a marathon. You don't see anybody around you. You see the end. You're right there. And then you you just start to relax a little bit. You don't keep sprinting you're like okay you know I don't see anybody let me just chill and work my way in and then boom Satan's right there he came up you didn't even see him and he won he like well of course he didn't run but you know what I'm saying like he he passed you and he caught you off guard and you didn't win and and that's how it is once we get closer we have to so keep going. A lot of people are getting lazy and a lot of people are getting comfortable. They're thinking, okay, you know what? I know everything I need to know. I know about the mark of the beast. I know this and that. God's revealed all this to me. I just got to avoid the mark of the beast and I'll be fine. Like, no, it's not just you got to avoid the mark of the beast. You got to get right with the Lord day and night, die <laughs> daily to your flesh and overcome you know you got it it's a it's a real battle but it's so worth it like and it makes perfect sense that the lord would make us would have us work hard for this and it's like of course the law is done away with but there is still certain laws like you can't just expect to go to heaven and your sin still like you can't still you can't expect to go to heaven and be the same person like like, God didn't die in vain, you know? Like, what was it all for then? You you still have to try to change. And especially if it's something easy, you you change it right away. You don't just keep doing it. Like, if it's something hard, of course, you, you, you seek prayer and you try and you ask God. You can't do everything on your own. You need God. But you don't just get comfortable and think, oh, everything's fine, like, thinking you're okay because we're all sinners there could still be something inside of me that I repent every day for like I don't know there's certain things I think I'm okay in but at the end of the day only the Lord knows so I try my best to catch anything I do anything I say and be still you know it, it's really it's hard but it's worth it. We got to just keep doing it. And the Lord sees when you're trying and it's hard and he will help you. Like, don't give up. Don't think, oh, he's he's fine with what you're doing. If if it's written that it's wrong, just don't do it. And don't engage in what others are doing, too. You know, I was kind of like that growing up. I was a follower and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being a follower if you're a follower of Christ. But if you're following man, it will lead you into the pit. So, yes, just 
just don't be following each other. You got to follow God. Even if they're, they're good people or this and that, you know, like, and they're with God. Glory to God for that, you know. But you still have your own path you're taking. You're not, you're not them. If they get to heaven, glory to God, they got to heaven. But you need to worry about yourself. You need to make sure you get to heaven. So just just continue this path, you guys. Don't give up. That was such a huge dream the Lord gave me. I told my husband, and he even, even he said, am I going to share this dream? Because it, it's huge. Like It really just shows you how close we are to the end. Both dreams were saying that pretty much. Even though they were different, it was saying the same thing. Like, we're pretty much at the end and look at what's going on. There's all this this new age religion, which is so detrimental to the church. So detrimental. But at the end of the day, the Lord is mightier. He, over, he already won. So it's really just the minds of the people who will overcome that lie of the new age. It's ridiculous. I'm glad I didn't hear about it before I when I got saved. Even if I did, I still would not probably jump on it just because I don't know. I just I was still in tune to a lot of things. But anyway, guys, just just keep going, you know. Just don't give up. Praise the Lord. Give him glory in all things that you do, all things that you say. Even if it's just in your heart, and your mind, give him glory, you know. All things go to Christ. All things are under him. Hallelujah. Hmm. Oh, and I just wanted to read that verse just in case anybody didn't know about the narrow, narrow road. It says in Matthew seven, thirteen, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be few there be that find it. So, yeah, guys, only a few people, even if we're all in the church, <laughs> even if there's millions of people in the church. I trust and believe in Jesus Christ and that they that he died for their sins. It don't matter. That's why I don't say that I'm saved. I say that I'll say I'm saved once I make it through and the Lord himself tells me, "Good job. You did it." Like <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm saved yet because even at the last minute, you know, you just you God forbid, of course, but you just got to keep going. Don't get lazy about it. Don't just don't get relaxed. That's such a huge mistake the church does. And I realized that when I first went to church when I was a teenager. So I went to church on my own. My family didn't force me. I just I, I knew God and I was I wanted to go to church. So I met up with some people that gave me a ride. <laughs> it wasn't the best church, of course, but it still helped me a little bit with uh, growing in Christ. So, yeah, like you just just keep going, guys. <sighs> keep fighting the good fight of faith. We can do it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we can do it. Praise his holy name. I'll be praying for you all. Stay safe out there.